Hi everyone, thank you for joining the second webinar in our series, Use of New Approach Methodologies for the Risk Assessment of Pesticides. This series is being co-organized by PETA India, the Society for Alternatives to Animal Experiments India, and the Biological Agri Solutions Association of India. I'm Dr. Ankita Pandey and I'm PETA India's Science Policy Advisor. I'll be co-moderating today's webinar with Dr. Akbar Shah from the Society for Alternatives to Animal Experiments India. Today, we will hear first from Dr. Mukul Kore in Talks Private Limited, who will be presenting on use of in vitro skin irritation corrosion test methods for the toxicity assessment of pesticides. Before I introduce the first speaker, I would like to point out that the information about the webinar series can be found at the link on this slide. There will be time for questions for the speakers at the end of the presentations. Everyone is on mute, but you can type questions or comments in the question section within your GoToWebinar toolbar at any time during the presentations. This toolbar should be on the right-hand side of your screen. And please do mention to which speaker the question is being addressed to. So speaking first today will be Dr. Mukul Pore. With a degree in veterinary medicine in 1986, Dr. Pore earned his master's degree in veterinary pathology in 1989 from the Department of Pathology, Mumbai Veterinary College, Mumbai. Uh, Dr. Pore is one of the co-founders of Intox Private Limited, a premier contract research organization based out of Pune and also its lifetime director, wherein he looks at the GLP test facility management. In his more than 27 years of experience in regulatory toxicology, Dr. Pore has designed and conducted toxicity studies for diverse kinds of products, including agrochemicals, industrial chemicals, and pharmaceuticals, to name a few. Dr. Pore is also a diplomat of the American Board of Toxicology and a European registered toxicologist, a member of several professional bodies and societies, including Society of Toxicology, the Chinese Society of Toxicology, Japanese Society of Toxicology, UK Registry of Toxicology, etc. Dr. Pore received the Fellow of, Tox Fellow of Society of Toxicology Award by the Society of Toxicology India in 2009, and was even nominated on the REACH Expert Committee as the expert in the field of environment, health and safety by Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India in 2015. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to Dr. Pori. Uh, Dr. Pori, I think you're on mute. Uh, no, I think, yeah, it's unmuted. Yeah. yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. It's visible, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, the topic, uh, today's topic is the use of in vitro skin irritation corrosion test methods for toxicity assessment of pesticides. It's only an overview of the uh, uh, what are the in vitro alternatives available and uh, whether they are accepted by the regulatory authorities or not. It's mainly for the CROs and those who are uh, working with the uh, hazard assessment of the any chemicals. Uh, so the outline of the presentation is today is just an introduction, uh, impact of chemicals on the human skin, the animal taste system used for skin corrosion, and irritation assessment. Uh, then the irrit uh, alternatives, what are the different alternatives available? Uh, evaluation of skin corrosion irritation potential using in vitro says what are the pros and cons of the in vitro systems and then the, we'll summarize it in a short time uh, as we are aware uh, the pesticides are in use for control of household pests and agrochemical agricultural pests rather for more than thousand years and uh, ultimately because of their widespread use and they are designed to be toxic to insects the uh, human being, animals, and the environment, they are exposed to these chemicals. And they come in contact during their use, during manufacture, distributions. These are widespread. Out of major roots, because the human skin is a dynamic and the multilayered organ, and which is the first organ to come in contact with these agrochemicals. 
the importance of skin from the exposure point of view is immense it's the largest organ in the body comprising almost 10 to 15 percent of the body weight it's metabolically active and it, the important functions are the protection thermoregulation and sensory activity and because of its anatomical position and large surface area skin is the major route of exposure for any chemicals that come in contact with the human body. Just a outline of the skin structure. Skin is, as I told you, it's a multi-layered uh, organ uh, comprising epidermis and dermis. Because to understand the different adverse reactions and the basis for predictive assays, some understanding of the skin anatomy and physiology is necessary because it's a heterogeneous organ it has a sweat glands and sebaceous glands and hair follicles and it's not a very simple organ made up of only one tissue so that's the importance of the skin actually uh, in protecting the human body and when the skin comes in contact with any chemical although today's topic is a pesticides i am going to use the word because uh, we come in contact with the uh, intermediates industrial chemicals uh, cosmetics and number of chemicals so the there are different reactions or adverse reactions of the screen the skin right from the local simple irritation till the cancer these are the different reactions depending upon the dose depending upon the duration of exposure whether it is a single exposure or it is it a multiple exposure daily exposure so these are the different reactions like contact dermatitis it can be simple irritant or corrosion the today's topic are allergic contact dermatitis if the human being comes in contact with the pesticides repeatedly then the phototoxicity photosensitivity then some other specific syndromes like acne granulomatous disease hypopigmentation toxic epidermal necrolysis and also the cancer there are number of pesticides and number of chemicals responsible for producing the cancers, particularly the basal cell granuloma and other cancers of the skin. So it is the, uh, basically the responsibility I can say of the regulatory authorities to safeguard the humanity and the environment. And the toxicological tests are required as per the guidelines issued by the regulatory agencies. These are some of the important regulatory agencies like OECD, EPA, then Indian uh, Regulatory Authority, that is CIVRC, Central Insecticide Board and Registration Committee, then EU, EC, and each uh, uh, country has its own regulatory authority for regulating the waste chemicals. And the information generated from these test methods is used to for hazard identification as well as for the risk assessment. So far, the potential adverse effects of any chemicals or pesticides are currently assessed largely based on the animal studies. And as I told you, the skin is the first to come in contact with any chemical the assessment of the potential of a substance to cause the damage to the skin is a basic endpoint evaluated in regulatory toxicology this endpoint is used to predict the hazard that is the intrinsic properties of a substance upon accidental or intentional contact intentional contact is during its use during its manufacture during the transport so the most important are the common chemically induced effects are first effects are the dermal irritation and dermal corrosion depending upon the nature of the chemical the dermal irritation is a reversible change of the skin following the application of the test chemical whereas corrosion is a irreversible damage mainly the there are events, cascade of events happen during the corrosions. That is a necrosis following its application. Then it can be sometimes typified by the ulcers, bleeding, discoloration, and ultimately then it remains 
there on the skin as a patch of alopecia and the scars that is called as and it is a irreversible reaction and it the insult persists then it may lead to further uh, these things but the basic test is required for the prediction of the dermal irritation and dermal corrosion is the skin irritation and skin corrosion tests i am not going into the details of this irritation and corrosion again so these are the common irritating agents although the pesticides is the main topic and regulated uh, by uh, stringently the surfactants the soaps the fuels hydrocarbons solvents used in different chemicals traditionally the dress test is the first predictive test for irritation and corrosion and has been in use for many decades rather almost from 1944 this test is in use and this test is still used to evaluate the irritation as well as the corrosion and this is a typical called as a skin irritation test in rabbit for any chemicals in this test the test material is applied typically onto the shaved skin of rabbits and it has been actually changed this dress test has went a number of changes has been made by different regulatory authorities the initial test was on six rabbits with two patches one abraded patch one non abraded patch intact patch and has been changed and the current skin irritation test that is recommended by the many regulatory authorities including the oecd is carried out on three animals only on the intact patch and that is again a sequential testing initially the one animal is tested depending upon the reaction the second animal is added after 48 hours or 72 hours and the third animal likewise so it's a typical dress test has been in use for a number of years after application of the 0.5 ml of the liquid or the solid chemical the skin is evaluated for erythema and edema basically that is a gross examination of the skin of the applied patch and it is examined at immediately 10 minutes after application 30 minutes after application 4 hours after application again in 24 hours 48 hours till the reaction persists a maximum for maybe 14 days although this test is in use for number of years and there are limitations of this animal test again because the rabbit and the human skin have different physiological properties and the responses to this test because of the abrasions and the occlusive application which may be more toxic to rabbits than to human beings and it is always been criticized for the over prediction of the human skin irritation and again a debated ethical issue of the in vivo test concerns the animal sufferings and the discomfort of the animals so what is the alternative as we have seen that traditionally the hazard assessments are conducted using the in vitro dress skin test but recently in vitro tests have gained the regulatory acceptance although in vitro tests are developed unless they are accepted by the regulators they will not be used by the scientists and the laboratories the motives to develop the alternatives are basically first is a law as i said if the in vitro alternatives are accepted by regulators and then the animal tests are ultimately removed from the regulations and people will not use so law is the main important thing then ethics for research purposes then some scientific reasons again we will discuss in details what are the scientific reasons to develop the alternatives and to use the alternatives then the economy of course and the public pressure because of the ethical issues uh, it's not only for the skin irritation there are number of other tests where alternatives are developed the russell and birch in 1959 gave the concept of 3 hours that is reduction replacement and refinement and this alternative testing or in vitro testing 
is the main thing to reduce the number of animals or even to replace the animals or to refine the animals tastes some historical background for alternatives is the marshall hall was one of the first to address the issue of alternatives and in 1969 the frame that is fund for the replacement of animals in medical experiments was founded in uk and again in 1981 the establishment of the john hopkins center for alternatives but the most important thing for acceptance of these alternatives by the regulatory authorities the major role paid uh, rather played by is the equam that is the european center for the validation of alternative methods which was developed established in 1990 and equam started the skin irritation validation study in november 2003 and just to tell the other details that equam has validated number of other alternative methods to the in vivo testing in 2007 equam approved two alternative tests that is episkin and epiderm as a replacement of the in vivo rabbit skin irritation tests although equam approved these tests uh, the regulators accepted these tests and included in the regulations in 2010 10 and now in light of the mandates passed by the us fda that is the food and drug administration environmental protection agency then these are the major regulatory authorities and the eu chemicals in vitro alternatives are of immense importance for the future of toxicity testing so there are number of regulatory accepted in vitro assay specifically for the prediction of the skin toxicity oecd 439 in vitro skin irritation that is the commonly used reconstructed human epidermis test then oecd 430 in vitro skin corrosion oecd 431 in vitro skin corrosion again some differences will i'll highlight afterwards then oecd 432 it is for the phototoxicity again the oecd 428 is for skin absorption and some in vitro cytotoxicity tests are already accepted by the regulators why the in vitro tests are not easily accepted or not easily replaced replacing the in vivo test is the major hurdle is the validation and the validation is the scientific process by which the reliability and relevance of a procedures are established and unless the in vitro alternatives are validated the regulators will not accept any in vitro alternatives and validation is a very complicated and lengthy process it is the first identify the needs then optimization test for the reproducibility internal testing it's a long process rather validation then the validation oecd program or equam they validate this test in multiple laboratories using the multiple using different chemicals and then again peer reviewed and then accepted by the regulators the most important test as one date available as a replacement to the in vivo test test is the epiderm or in vitro skin irritation using the reconstructed human epidermis test method here the oecd 439 that is the reconstructed human epidermis and oecd 431 in vitro skin corrosion the test system that is the human epidermis 3d model is the common only difference is the oecd 439 can predict only the skin irritation whereas oecd 431 can predict only the skin corrosion the and just in between the there is a guidance document on the toxicology for the registration of pesticides in india and this guidance documents specifically mentioned about two tests that is the original primary skin irritation test in rabbit as well as the in vitro skin irritation 
on the human epidermis test method but the latest guidelines have started accepting the in vitro method very well there is absolutely no hurdle and this test very soon will be accepted by the regulators in india whereas it is already in the regulations or accepted by the regulatory agencies in us epa eu and all developed and developing countries so currently the three main commercial human skin equivalents used for the skin irrigation testing are the episkin epiderm and the skin ethic these are basically this skin model or 3d tissue model is developed based on the in vitro test system of reconstructed human epidermis and which the most important thing is which closely mimics the biochemical and physiological properties of human epidermis because the main source for developing this whether it is ip skin or epiderm or skin ethic these are the different actually the brand names and the models they are human keratinocytes is the main cell source used for developing these models and as i told you originally this test is adopted by the oecd in 2010 and updated in again in 2013 2015 and latest in june to 21 just in short i'm not going into the details of each but the basic mechanism is the human derived epidermal keratinocytes are cultured to form a multi layered highly differentiated model just to mimic the human epidermis which consists of the organized basal layer then spinous and granulosa layers and cell viability is the main criteria used to classify the chemicals whether they are irritant or non irritant whether they are corrosive or non corrosive this oecd 431 is used basically for prediction of corrosivity the results can be used for regulatory purposes for distinguishing corrosive or non corrosive and the same human reconstructed human skin model is used in oecd 439 is a assay that allows the distinction between the irritant substances and the results can very well accepted by the regulatory purposes and is used as a stand alone replacement for in vivo skin irrigation testing or sometimes as a where the integrated approaches to the testing and assessments are followed for in vivo test this can be used as a partial replacement test within a tired testing strategy what are the advantages of the in vitro system no integrations interactions with the other organs increased sensitivity better control over conditions better experimental flexibility can be repeated number of times with multiples number uh, numbers then clear interpretation of course large sample capacity it can be repeated and again small amount of the test substance is needed and there are number of advantages for the using the in vitro systems to summarize i can elaborate the mechanism and other things during the question and answer session if anybody has as i told you the skin is an exciting and interesting organ and first to face the exposure of any chemical and because of its anatomical nature position the irritation and corrosion of the skin is a significant health problem the predictive tests for irritation corrosion are rapidly changing from animal testing to in vitro alternatives the take away point here is the in vitro alternative tests have been validated and accepted by the regulatory authorities for safety assessment of pesticides as along with the other uh, chemicals 
and this is a full replacement of animal studies for prediction of the skin irritation or corrosion but still for some regulatory authorities the alternative assays are being used for priority setting as i told you for the integrated approaches and screening purposes the advantages are being made advancements are being made every day and hopefully very soon the animals or dress test for that matter will not have to be used for prediction of any skin irritation or corrosion potential thank you thank you dr pore for your very interesting presentation uh, our next speaker today is dr ab pant who will be presenting some case studies using in vitro skin irritation corrosion test methods for toxicity assessment of pesticides um, dr pant started his research career over 32 years back at csr central drug research institute lucknow he is an alumnus of iit roorkee uttarakhand and currently serves as a senior principal scientist at csr indian institute of toxicology research lucknow where he has been working to create human brain specific neurotoxicity and developmental neurotoxicity models using stem cells dr pant is also the lead glp inspector for the government of india and also serves as an expert for several regulatory bodies such as bureau of indian standards sidisco fssai icmr dst to name a few He is a member of several professional bodies and societies, and has won several awards and honors, including the Vigyan Ratna Award of 2010, Shakuntala Amritchand Prize of ICMR, the National Bioscience Award 2012 by DBT, Professor K D Shetty Memorial Oration Award 2017 by the Indian Academy of Neurosciences, to name a few. He has been elected Fellow of Academy of Toxicological Sciences USA, Society of Toxicology India. Indian Academy of Neurosciences, Academy of Sciences for Animal Welfare, India, etc. In view of his outstanding credibility in toxicology, Dr. Pant has been included as a global toxicologist in the European and United Kingdom Register of Toxicologists. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to Dr. Pant. Thank you. my screen is visible yes sir it's visible thank you so very good evening to galaxy of feminists attending this webinar and at the outset let me express my thanks to the organizers especially to dr ankita pande national scientific advisor pata india for providing me this opportunity to discuss the regulatory requirements for such an important issue of human health and safety the dr pore a good friend of mine made my job easy by elaborating many of the important aspects of non animal methods currently being used in the safety and efficacy studies of chemicals and their ingredients with a special reference to the skin corrosion and irritation if you see that it is almost mandatory now that the testing for all range of products and their ingredients for their potential to induce the skin corrosion and irritation must be started from in silico simulations and then in vitro test methods and the in vivo animal studies should be the last resort when the in vitro methods are not suitable for a particular type of chemical or in vitro results are not adequate for classification of a chemical and the risk assessment so that means the only under these circumstances the animal models can be utilized if you see that the oecd guidelines document on the ita for skin corrosion and irritation clearly advocates the examination of existing data prior to jump on even to the in vitro experimentations the document clearly states that the whatever data either from epidemiological and clinical studies or the experimental data available should be examined first and if not available then the information should be gathered using non testing strategies like the read across 
bridging from the structurally or biologically related molecules, etc. And if the data are insufficient to establish the safety, then only this to start with this testing of using non-animal approaches. The OECD has already approved and adopted testing guidelines for in vitro testing to assess the skin corrosion and irradiation. And it is a simple, in this slide, if you see that it is a simple schematic depiction of the top to bound and down to top approach of testing of chemicals for the assessment of their potential of skin corrosion and irradiation. Based on the existing information or the information gathered through in silico approaches, if a chemical is suspected to have a potential to induce skin corrosion, then a top to down approach will be applicable following OECD guideline 431. If chemical found to be corrosive in nature, if you see the red color, yes, then it may be evaluated further using test guideline 435 for subclassifications amongst the corrosive categories. And if found non corrosive, then it will be evaluated further for irritation potential using OECD test guideline 439. Accordingly, it will be labeled as an irritant or non irritant in a similar way. If existing data says the chemical is not suspected case of corrosive nature, then we have to start with the top to down approach using OECD guideline 439 and follow the path as depicted in the slide. Here it is depicted very clear. And specifically for today's talk, I have restricted myself only on the reconstructed human epidermis test method for skin corrosion and irritation assessment following the test guideline 431 and 439 only. This slide is just to apprise you guys that a different type of reconstructs mimicking the human skin are commercially available and their sensitivities are different. So, the, so based on the that only we have to decide whether a chemical fall as a corrosive or irritant or not because the sensitivities are different. So based on the sensitivity that the guideline says that how much percent viability is required to say some chemical as a corrosive or as a irritant or as a non irritant or whatever way the approved assay is it and if you see that the simple MTT assay is recommended by the guidelines and this approved assay is a gold standard assay for cytotoxicity evaluation and we have to put the appropriate positive and negative control as we are doing routinely in our laboratories and based on the data received the classification of chemical as corrosive or non corrosive can be decided and this is a simple protocol uh, just a moment where is that where is my slides okay this, now it is appearing so basically this is a pictorial representation of the protocol which i deliberately kept just to discuss although it's a very primitive kind of essay entity essay everybody is doing for last many years for these kind of essays but few things we have to keep in mind while we are doing these kind of experiment because the mean the small mistakes what we have committed may impact the result outcome substantially or significantly and it may just fall in a masking of the result or the false positive and false negative first thing is when you receive the tissue you have to look at the basically trail of the transportation as per the manufacturer's condition whether the tissue has been transported in the condition what are the laid down for that purpose or we can develop our own sop for the transportation of the tissue just to have the best healthy and adequate biological material to start with and then prior to start the experiment we have to pre-incubate the tissue 
for one hour in SA medium just for the acclimatization of the tissue because tissue will acclimatize in the test conditions then only we can start then thereafter we will expose the tissue with the test item for three minutes 60 minutes and 240 minutes those are the recommended time points by the regulatory agencies as per the guidelines and thereafter there will be a tissue rinsing after the exposure tissue will be rinsed with the sterile pbs or the normal saline just to remove the test item from the surface of tissue and then thereafter we have to dry the surface of the tissue by sterile blotting paper and then we have to incubate this tissue for three hours with the test uh, this uh, mtt tetrazolium bromide salt at a concentration of 1 mg per ml for three hours and thereafter then we will extract because this pale yellow tetrazolium bromide salt will turn to the crystal violet color crystals because of the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme activity of the mitochondria and those crystals should be iso uh, extracted from the tissue using the isopropanol extract for the two hours and thereafter what we will do we will take around 100 microliter in triplicate from the extract and put into the 96 well plate so that means minimum three replicates will be required for each concentration or each group and then we can take a od of at 750 570 nanometers but that again there is a clutch if you see 570 is written in the test guideline but prior to take any absorbance you have to take a kinetics between 500 to 600 at an interval of 10 nanometers to ensure that yes peak is coming at 570 or sometime what happened that peak will come at 5, 550 530 540 depending upon the test item interaction with the mtt and the tissue so that means we have to ensure that yes we are taking uh, reading or od or absorbance at an appropriate nanometer otherwise the reading will not be appropriate then if you see this basically uh as i have said earlier that the commercially uh, there are many commercially available skin constructs in the market and based on that the globally harmonized system made the classification of chemicals to keep them under the category and subcategory of corrosive and irradiation and i'll not take much time on this and next slides as these tables are already available in the guidelines document to elaborate on the classification of chemical for just a quick note for this ep skin model if the percent viability is less than 35 percent upon three minutes exposure the chemical will fall under the category of 1a corrosive while if more than 35 percent following the exposure of 24 minutes the chemical is non-corrosive so that means if you see again as dr pore said that there are three epiderms are already there in the market and commercially available and their sensitivity levels are different and based on that the <clears throat> global harmonization system had made the different percent of viability to say some chemical is corrosive and non-corrosive and if simply you sit look at the step two where if the viability is less than 25 percent in case of epiderm it will come under the category 1a while in case of skin ethics that viability should be less than 18 percent why for the third one that viability should be less than 15 percent after the three minute exposure so that means we have to keep it in mind that what kind of reconstruct we are using based on that construct only we have to decide whether this chemical will fall under the category of corrosive 1a or 1b or 1c or in what category it will fall because if we are not very particular for that then we may make a mistake and that chemical will not fall under the accurate category of that particular 
and if you see that uh, i think i can escape this slide as it pertains the simple information for the test system and assay as per the oecd guideline 439 which has already been approved and adopted for assessing the irritation potential of the test item using mtt simply so that means in this slide we just want to show you that yes what kind of negative control what kind of positive control we have to put and what assay we have to do that is simply mtt assay and in if you see that in the guideline 439 if the mean tissue viability is less than 50 percent it will fall under the category of irritant as per the prediction of the in vivo and category and if it is more than 50 percent it's a non irritant now here onward just we'll focus uh very categorically uh because if you see from this uh we are now we will discuss the few of the cases where the misinterpretation of the data may happen due to some of the minor mistakes and it is quite often when we are getting percent viability more than unexposed neg or negative control group it is simply phenomenon to understand that mtt assay in mtt assay we are measuring the enzymatic activity of the mitochondria not the absolute cell count simply i will just try to elaborate on this if supposing that we are exposing cells with some chemical the chemical will go inside what the cell will do cell will try to eliminate that molecule just to maintain its own homeostasis and for which the cell has to metabolize that chemical and for this metabolism the additional amount of enzymes are required and enzymes are proteins and protein synthesis requires the energy basically protein synthesis is an energy required process and energy will be provided by the mitochondria so what happened in the cells the number of mitochondria will increase and the giant mitochondria will form so against the control in the exposed cells the number of mitochondria will increase and the size of mitochondria will increase so in mtt assay what we are measuring we are measuring simple the succinate dehydrogenase and enzyme of mitochondria so that means obviously if the concentration of the test item is subtoxic so that means the activity of that enzyme will be greater than the when we compare with the control so that means the value will go more than 100 percent viability so that means in case of investigative research when we are doing the investigative research where we wish to know the exact mechanism of action or mechanistic insights of that chemical into the biological system then we are using the subtoxic doses while we are doing the regulatory research so we have to take a concentration which is supposed to come in contact with the human subject or maybe a deciding factor to put a chemical in the corrosive or in the in irritant category or not so sometime when we are using that inadequate dose of the chemical in that case the graph may be sometime a parabolic graph where that initially that value will go more than control and then later on it will come down to the below the control value okay so what is the solution for that so first solution is that to select a dose which is adequate and appropriate to induce the detrimental effect onto the cell or otherwise what else we can do we can calculate the atp numbers or atp adp ratio in the cells because that commercial kits are already available in the market so by that we can analyze yes based on the atp and adp ratio and adp number we can say yes this chemical may fall under the category of corrosive or not or irritant or not so this is one thing so that means the other condition is where if you see the mtt itself is interacting with the test item or with the tissue sometimes the chemical itself is interacting with the tissue or with the mtt under these circumstances uh, where is my slides okay yes okay so simply then we have to run a parallel group just to assess the mtt reduction 
क्वांटिफिकेशन ऑफ द टेस्ट आइटम और वी हैव टू पुट ए किल्ड टिश्यू कंट्रोल इन पैनल सेट नाउ इन द नेक्स्ट टू और थ्री स्लाइड्स आई विल इलेबोरेट ऑन इन व्हाट वे व्हाट इज द किल्ड कंट्रोल एंड हाउ वी कैन डिटेक्ट द एमटीटी रिडक्शन विदाउट एनी टिश्यू सो simply this test is a very simple test just like a simple mtt assay what we can do we can we can take a tube where we can put the test item and mtt without any tissue so that means no enzymatic system is there and simply we will follow the protocol like the mtt assay that we will expose the chemical for 3 hours in the mtt and take an od and see that if it turn to the blue and purple color so that means the chemical itself is interacting with the mtt and causing some reduction and we can quantify this in terms of od at 570 nanometers and this will be subtracted into the main value that we will discuss in next slide so if you see that in a a is a control b is a test item where interaction is not with this mtt while in the c is a test compound which has the mild interaction with the entity and in the d if you see that the chemical is interacting severely with the entity and the crystal violet color is a very very dark and where we have to use the killed control tissue if that reduction of entity by the test item is less than 30% in case if it is more than 30% then you have to come to iitr to just take an opinion what we have to do i cannot explain here right now because this is not a platform but definitely when you can just contact me then i will tell you that in that case what strategy should be adopted if that is more than 30% in that case now we have to just look at what is the role of killed control tissue this in this panel if you see this is a simple protocol of mtt assay take a living tissue 3d construct a negative control negative control may be a sterile pbs or a normal saline a positive control a positive control in this case corrosive may be sds 5% to 1% somewhere and koh also and expose the living tissue with a test chemical as per the protocol for the mtt assay and take od at 570 nanometer this is a simple when the test item is not interacting with the entity now second case this is killed control plus test item so that means how to make a killed tissue simply just we will take the living tissue place in distilled water and incubate it in 37 degrees centigrade in 5% co2 more than 90% relative humidity for 24 hours and thereafter we will just discard the water and freeze the tissue when in cryo condition we will freeze the tissue the, all the cells will die and at the time of experiment we will just thaw the tissue at room temperature and expose it with a test chemical and rest of the protocol as we follow with the mtt assay and take some od because in the killed tissue itself some sort of enzymatic activity will be there remain there when we just thaw it because at the time of freezing cells were alive and some enzymatic activity was there and when we just thaw them so that means inactivated enzyme may activate again and create some kind of interaction and some kind of reduction of mtt so some od will be there so third case is negative killed control now we have to understand that what is negative killed control in this killed control instead of test item we are simply putting water so that means mtt is not there to reduce so that means whatever enzymes are active they may have certain amount of od so that means this is a negative killed control where that mtt is not put in while in killed control mtt is there just to interact with the tissue so that means now we have three groups one is the standard mtt and the other is the kill control and the third one is the negative kill control so now in the next slide 
just we will try to understand how this skill control will play an important role to make the viability essay or to just come to the conclusion now just in this plate i will just uh, tell you this is negative control this is positive control and this kc1 is the killed control and this is negative kill control and this a1 is the test item one so that means the test item one is also there just a moment just uh, i'm minimizing the side block okay so that means this panel is there negative control positive control killed control and negative kill control and a1 is the test item so what is the simple procedure to calculate the viability of positive control that means od of positive control upon od of negative control multiplied by 100 that is the value of the percent viability of positive control now corrected killed control corrected killed control means od of killed control what the od we have received minus od of negative kill control because in negative kill control that mtt was not there only water was there in the killed control mtt was there so definitely the od of killed control will be greater than the negative kill control so that means whatever od will be there that will be corrected killed control od now we can calculate the percent viability of corrected killed control that means od of corrected killed control and od of negative control od of this negative control into 100 can be considered as the viability of corrected killed control then the again now we how we can calculate the viability of test item a simply od of test item upon od of negative control into 100 this is simple calculation what we are doing in the laboratory but now how this corrected killed control can impact so that means corrected percent viability of a now we are putting some correction in the viability of test item equal to viability percent viability of a actually what we got minus percent viability of corrected kin control so that means this value will be the eject percent viability because now we have subtracted the corrected killed value which we got because of the interaction of the test item with the mtt in the live live tissue conditions so that means this is a complete one set of calculation and we have put it three replicates this is nc2 nc3 is the three replicate so that means everything is in three replicates so now we can calculate the mean corrected percent viability a how it will be calculated corrected test viability one two and three all the three replicate upon three so this will be a mean value and then we can calculate the sd of this so if you see from this fourth panel we can simply calculate the percent viability of the test item okay but after this corrected the value will be different how it will be different in the next slide i will explain that i have put it this slide just to elaborate in that how this killed control correction can impact the ultimate outcome of your decision so if we simply see that this is a test item a killed control od of the killed control was somewhere 0.473 that means killed control od means that simply that tissue is interacting with mtt and giving some kind of reduction to mtt so that od is there and this is the od of negative killed control negative killed control means where the mtt was not there only killed tissue was there so that means some od is still there that is 0 0.190 so corrected killed control value will be a minus b equal to c that means this is the actual od because of the mtt reduction due to this killed tissue okay 
so that means what the enzymatic activity was there in the kill tissue and interacted with mtt this is the corrected value and now this is simple negative control od what od we got without any test item without anything only in the tissue and non corrected sample a od test items od non corrected is 0.927 now corrected kc value corrected kill control value is what is this this is 0.283 corrected sample a od is d minus c this is c and this is d so that means now corrected value is 0.644 while non corrected value for od of test item was 0.927 you may be confused just to reduce this confusion I, i cannot say that to avoid this confusion just to reduce this confusion i have put it one graph which will further just explain you how this correction can change the decision if you see the percent salivability without killed control correction this is the od of your test item this is the od of negative control multiplied by 100 your viability is 56.5% and above to 50% is non irritant prediction that means if the viability is more than 50% your test item is non irritant so prediction is non irritant now under second scenario the percent viability with killed control correction now correction is put it there so after correction what is the od of your test item is 0.644 upon negative control od is 1.64 into 100 that means percent salivability is somewhere 39.3 which is under the category of irritant prediction so that means if you have put it the killed control that means it has changed the prediction or the fate of chemical from the non irritant to the irritant category so that means now you can see that how it is important to keep in mind whether this compound test item what you are just going to test is having some sort of interaction with the test that is mtt or any sort of tissue interaction in the next slide i will explain that how the test item can interact with the tissue also not to the mtt only so that is the case of coloration interference say for example if your test item is having some kind of color which can stain to the tissue or interact with the mtt so that both the conditions are come together maybe the test item can interact with the mtt to reduce it without any biological activity second is that the test item can stain or dye to the tissue itself so that means interaction may affect the biological activity of the tissue so under these circumstances how you can come out so here instead of putting one killed control beside that you have to put a living mtt control also living mtt control and killed control both the controls will be there and under which circumstances these controls will be there so living mtt control will be put it there where the color test item is not interfering with the mtt in case that the test item is not interfering with the mtt it is only interfering with the tissue that means it is staining to the tissue so that means we will put only living mtt control where the color test item is interacting with the mtt as well with the tissue so we have to put both killed control and in the killed control we have to put two controls one is the killed mtt control and killed mtt negative control as well as the living control it will be a lot of jargon for you so that's why i have kept three consecutive slides just to make you understand that in what way you have to deal with this kind of situations so this is the first conditions where the colorant is not interfering with mtt that means that 
color colored test item may interfere with the tissue only not with the mtt so in that scenario in what way we can handle it simply negative control positive control and this is living control lc1 is the living control and a is the test item again they are in triplicates so first we will discuss about the one duplicate and in the same way second duplicate and third duplicate and that will take the mean okay so simply as in the last slide we have calculated the percent viability for positive control od of positive control upon od of negative control in 200 so that will give the percent viability of the positive control then percent to viability of living control percent to viability of living control that means od of living control upon od of negative control into 100 okay so that means living control is what living control is that we are putting simply a living tissue without any mtt that means test item is there but mtt is not there so that means if some od is there so that means that od is because of the interaction of the chemical with the tissue that kind of reduction is there and that kind of color is reflecting or as a od so that is the viability of living control then viability of test item od of test item upon od of negative control into 100 simple calculation what we are doing in the laboratory now corrected percent viability of test item that means percent viability of a third panel minus viability percent viability of living control so simple now this is a whatever od we have received with the living control that we have to minus from the actual reading of viable a control so that means this is the corrective percent viability of the test item and just to take a mean corrected we have to just take the value of all the replicates and upon three so that will come the mean and then we can calculate the sd value okay so this was the case where that test item is interfering with the tissue but not with the mtt in the next slide case is little bit complicated where the test item is a colored test item which is interacting with the mtt and reducing it without any tissue and at the same time that chemical is also interacting with the tissue and giving some od so now we have to subtract the two ods that is one with the living control and one with the killed control so that means there are situations something like that so this is the negative control positive control living control and the third one is killed control without entity this is killed control without entity and this is killed control with entity and this is the negative killed control so that means we have to calculate the od of all these four and then subtract so how we will do i will try to just convey this message even if i have just kept one another slide to make it more simple first i will try to just elaborate in this slide and if it is confused then we'll go for the next slide and then we'll try to convey it so simply this is the calculation of the percent solvability of positive control this is the percent living the percent od of the living control simply od of living control upon od of negative control into 100 percent of killed control that means od of killed control upon od of negative control into 100 this will be the value of the percent viability of the killed control now correlate corrected kill control will be od of kill control and od of negative kill control because negative kill control was earlier there so that means it will give the corrected one because in negative kill control the test item was not there so that means this is because of only this tissue so that means percent corrected killed control is equal to od of corrected kill control upon od of negative control into 100 that means this is corrected kill control viability now this is most complicated one is so that means this is simple viability 
calculation of the test item and now in this case where the two factors are there one is the colored test item is interacting with the entity as well as with the tissue so how to calculate the exact corrected percent viability of test item a that means percent viability of test item minus percent viability of living control this value will be subtracted will be the with the percent viability of corrected killed control and then add to the percent viability of killed control without entity so this will give the exact picture of the exact viability what you have in the test condition so and mean you can take by all three replicates upon three now just to make it more understandable i have put it this table and is in this table i will take uh, 30 seconds to elaborate if you see this is the test item simply one test item where the percent viability came 80.9% okay so that means initially the percent viability was mean rather mean test viability was 80.9 we have not made any corrections so that means the final viability we have calculated at 80.9 okay now again if we just revisit to this case it was 80.9 now we have put it the percent mean viability of corrected killed control corrected killed control means killed control plus mtt so that means the value of this corrected kid control was the approximate 10% 10.9% viability so we have to minus this from the 80.9 so finally corrected will come somewhere 70.0 now the other factor we have added because this test item is interacting with both mtt as well as the tissue so this second bar was just taking care of mtt reduction because of test item this third bar is taking care of that interaction of this chemical with that living tissue itself so that means now out of this 80.9 again we have just subtracted the interaction with the tissue that is 19% viability so now the value come down to the 61.9% now if we add all the factors all the factors means this value was initially 80.9 that mtt reduction without any tissue that is 10.9% and interaction with the living tissue is a 19% that means 29.9% is this so that means we will subtract 29.9 from this 80 and 5% is the corrected one killed control that we have to add in that so it will come somewhere 56 so if you see final corrected viability of a test item will just come percent viability for test test uh, sample minus percent viability of corrected killed control minus viability of the living control plus viability of killed control so that means it will come 56 so actually the effective viability is 56 only while earlier it was 80.9 so that means if we are not considering these kind of factors so that means there are possibility to get a false positive or false negative idea about any compound and that compound may fall a wrong category just to take a last attempt to make you understand i have put it one graph in the next slide so just to make it you so that means od of sample a was initially 1.170 and od of color control was 0.385 okay this is color control so corrected sample od come somewhere 0.785 so based on that if we calculate the percent viability correction od of negative control 1.73 percent viability of non corrected sample a suppose that based on this od of sample a if we just calculate based on this 
so simply a upon d this negative control into 100 that will come somewhere 67.4 percent it is uncorrected where we have not added any correction for interaction of this colored molecule with the mtt or with the tissue without any correction if we take the viability it will come somewhere 67.4 percent now if we add the correction because for the test item correct uh, interaction with the mtt and with the tissue it od of color control was there correction was there 0.385 if we make this correction percent viability of corrected sample a that we see this one upon d is 45.4 so that means percent viability after correction reduced to the 45.4 percent and if you see in first case the chemical falls under the non-irritant prediction non-irritant category because the viability is 67.4 percent but if you made the corrections then after correction this will fall under the category of irritant so that means we have to be very careful that chemical is interacting with the test uh, tissue or with the mtt and if they are producing some kind of reducing conditions and some od that od should be considered as a background od and it should be corrected in the main od of the test item which we have received with the all test conditions um, now in case four <clears throat> i have put it another conditions where we can have some sort of problems if you see <clears throat> adjusting values with the valid controls what is the problem with this table negative control is od is 1.665 which we can consider as a hundred percent to calculate the viability for others but the problem is the sd value is 18.5 percent sd value 18.5 percent is very high sd it shows that the triplicate what we have used they have the variable od maybe a wide range of variation in the od that's why this high value of the sd percentage is there and if you see the positive control this percentage is 21.8 and sd is 3.3 test item a 54.6 percent viability and if you see that again the sd value is 37.1 that means the values of replicate might be very much variable because of that this huge variability in the sd is there and fourth is the compound b where that viability is 51 percent and the sd is reasonably good 6.5 so we can consider so what is the problem in that problem is if you see if we just correct it if because we are just calculating cell viability with the od of negative control so that means the replicates what we are using to calculate the percent of the other test item should be very close and if you see if we make a correction this negative control value is 2.023 and now sd is 3.2 simply we have corrected this value that means now od of negative control is reasonably good 3.2 shows that all the three replicate ods will be very near that's why this percent variation is only 3.2 and rest of the values for positive control a and b are same as in table one so that means if you see all ods are same except the od of negative control and it's sd the percent change in the positive control is 17.9 and od is again 2.7 so that means there is no change between uh, first table and second table now come to the test item a that means with the revised negative control od now the percentage viability is 44.9 instead of 54.6 and again if you see sd is still very high and in case of b test item b 
it was in first table one it was 51% now it brought down to 41.2 and sd is 5.8 so all three readings are very reasonable because sd of 50 5.8 is absolutely fine there is no problem so that means in test item b the values of the replicate might be very close that's why this sd is a 5.8 percent but now if you see this item b just came under the category of irritant while earlier it was in non-irritant earlier it was 51 percent qualifying for the non-irritant now it is irritant and the test item a is still in controversy because this test item is replicates are not in accordance to the value so that means something gone wrong with the replicates that's why this much uh, sd value is there so now we have to take a judgment we have to be judicious whether this test item a is considered as irritant or not because value is falling in the irritant category 44.9 but the sd value is 29.8 so under these circumstances, we have to just look at the sample under the microscope for the integrity of the tissue and so other sort of disturbances there because it is quite possible that the test item is a viscous material, adhesive material or the tissue is damaged or something happened. So that means that is one thing. Second thing is if even in microscopic observation, everything is fine. and you have conducted the atp atp ratio assay or atp quantification that is also fine then what to do then under these circumstances you have to go with the in vivo test because earlier we said under the circumstances where the in vitro assays are not conclusive or with the test item a specific kind of test item where we are unable to make any decision for any test item using in vitro assay then only we can go with the in vivo assay so here in this case we can take the help of in vivo assay if i am putting again if the other microscopical observations and other in vitro assays are inconclusive then the other situation i have put it here in this slide if you see that is there anything is wrong negative control od is fine 100 percent and sd value is still fine in positive control sd value is 2.2 it's fine in test item a od value is 1.9 it's absolutely fine percent viability is 43 percent it may fall under the category of irritant and in test item b this od is 19.9 so that means some issue might be there with the replicates that's why this kind of reading fluctuation is there for test item 3 that the od this sd is fine and od is also fine and this percent viability is fine so it is clearly fall under the severe category of corrosive nature okay so from this table only we could see that test item b has some issue but now when I click and something will appear, then you will realize that many things is not okay in this slide. If you see, test item A is if a viscous liquid, residual test item remains after rinsing because there was one step where after incubation with MTT, we are after incubation with the test item, we have to rinse the tissue with a copious amount of sterile PBS or saline just to remove the test item so that means the further damage should not be there so probabilities are there if that residual test item remains after rinsing so that means this residual test item may have increased the toxicity so whatever results we are getting at a 43 percent it may be that effect and this percent viability may be 80 percent or 70 percent if the absolute removal of the test item was there in that item so that means this item is now falling in the category of irritant while it might be because of the residual attachment of the test item into the tissue over a period of time instead of 240 minutes it is there for the 
again five four five six hours. So that means this is a false positive results. Now if you see the test item B conditions, non viscous liquid item was there. The tissue of one of the replicate was damaged while removing the smash. It is quite possible because that SD value is 19.9. So it is quite possible that out of three replicates, any one replicate is showing very absurd reading. And that absurd reading is because of the damage of the tissue. Because the tissue is damaged, and because of that damage, this kind of variability is there. And then if in case of third, solid white powder completely removed from the tissue. So here in this case, because that the test item was a powder and it is completely removed and SD value is 1.7. So it's a very close. So it is anticipated that all the values in the replicates are very close. So that viability is 15.6% is a clear cut case of corrosive nature. So that means sometime these kind of factors are also affecting the results as well as the category and the fate of chemical. So that means we have to be very careful while we are making any decision based on the in vitro assays. That means these kind of things we have to be looked at. Now, just to make it more clear, I have put it one again table that if you see, these are the three test item ABC. In the triplicates, there are three ODs. And if you see that percent viability based on these three ODs, in chemical A, the two readings are saying that this chemical should go into the irritant category, while one reading is saying that no, non-irritant. In B, only two readings are saying that it is non-irritant, but one reading is saying that irritant. And in chemical C, all the readings are saying irritant, but if you see that the third replicate is showing only 4.0% viability. So it shows somewhere that either tissue is damaged or something has happened, which is not correct because the inconsistent values are there. One is 42.5, another is 20, and third one is the fourth one, 4%. 4 so that means in this, all the three replicates have some problem. So that means this data cannot be considered because these all three readings are in a different range. If you calculate the SD, SD will come somewhere 30 or something like that. Okay, so that means this third case is almost gone case. While now we can discuss these two cases. In these two cases, if you see the next, so that means this is negative control, this is positive control, absolutely fine SD, no issue. Now the case A, case A, the mean is 49.8% and SD is fine 5.9. 49.8 is just borderline case for this irritant or non irritant borderline case. But if you see in A, the two values were showing irritant while only one value was showing non irritant, still it is going a borderline case or we can say the category of non irritant because if 0.2 is increasing, it will be 50%. So 50% is a non-irritant. So in spite of having two replicates showing irritant, one replicate is showing non-irritant and it falls under the category of non-irritant. While in case of test item B, two replicates are showing non-irritants, but because of one replicate, it falls under the category of irritant and SD is okay. So that means, under these circumstances, what you will do? Under these circumstances, at least either we have to repeat the experiment once again or some other assay should be done to confirm prior to decide the category of these kind of chemical. Otherwise, if you see, if you will believe on these readings, so that means the test item A should be in the category of irritant while chemical B should not be in the category of irritant. So that means in this case also, we should be very just and do another alternative test to confirm it. Now case seven, in case of probable tissue loss, here if you see 
to say something corrosive or non corrosive there are two time point one is the 3 minute exposure and one is 6 minute exposure so if you see replicate one replicate two and replicate three these are the percent cell vibrating percent vibrating for 3 minutes in case of test item a vibrity is a very consistent 65 64 63 and mean is 64.57 it's fine for 60 minutes if you see in replicate 1 3.2 another is 18 15.2 so 18 and 15.2 are reasonably okay but 3.2 is not okay there might be some problem with the tissue maybe some tissue damage is there or as i have discussed in the previous slide some that uh, test item is a adhesive type of material that is stick to the tissue or some corrosive material which corrode the tissue for 60 minute because 60 minute is a quite long time in that 60 minute of time the tissue is completely damaged by this test item or something like that gone and if you see the mean is 12.13 so that means this is the case in the test item b for 3 minutes 62 60 and one is a 2.5 so that means this 2.5 which is obviously either it is a man made problem or it's a human error or some tissue damage or something has gone wrong so we have to look at or do the root cause analysis why this reading is 2.5 based on this we cannot make any conclusion because reading is 41.6 and if you see in 60 minute 32.17 so based on the a uh, global harmonized system this chemical falls under the non corrosive category while there is some problem is with the 2.5 so we have to look at and chemical c is a clear cut case of fine everything is fine sd is very low and this is a complete non corrosive non irritative but compound b if you see compound b the sd value for 3 minute is so high so that means this value cannot be considered in the test item a for 60 minute the sd value is too high so under these cases we have to review either we have to repeat the experiment or we have to do some alternative because cytokine assays are also approved and adopted by oecd and other agencies so we can do the cytokine analysis uh, pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory cytokines and other assays so that means we have to look at and probably this is uh, my the last slide and in this last slide if you see so based on that i do trust that the, all the stakeholders are working hard to develop the non animal system for evaluation of the chemicals for their safety and efficacy using the out edwards outcome pathway analysis which is one amongst the comprehensive approaches people are using to link the cellular and molecular events to the events of regulatory interest today we have high throughput methods in 2d and 3d cultures and organoid systems using stem cell ipscs primary cultures immortalized cell lines of human and animal origin and of course strong machine learning and artificial intelligence to handle the huge amount of data for prediction prior to start even the in vitro experimentations so starting from the source of exposure from the environment to the final impact of on individual population and community and ecosystem can be assessed without the use of laboratory animals in the primary screening of chemicals so that means if you see in this slide high throughput assays are available up to tissues and 2d cultures that can predict up to the value of organ and the 3d construct and the organoids and organ on chip that can give the information up to the population level and that computer simulation can just do the work starting from the molecular initiating event to the community effect so that means these kind of adverse outcome pathway analysis are very you can say promising and adoptable approach even by the regulatory agencies and even oecd as just carried out these kind of adverse outcome pathway analysis in a big way and they have identified more than 600 stressors and leads and that if you see that there huge 
setup is there with the OECD also. So perhaps uh, this is my last slide, and I would like to thanks to all the listeners and attendees for patient hearing to this talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Pant, for your wonderful presentation. And uh, you could you could uh, introduce some uh, several checks and balances to to make the data finally valid in terms of MTTSA. So it's, it is brilliant, and you could think of all the all the uh, issues that are concerned with the MTTSA, and you have you will be able to uh, bring out the, the other other uh, essential controls that will resolve the issue. So thank you so much for your, your very brilliant and wonderful presentation. So now uh, I am Dr. Akbar Shah, the um, uh, General Secretary of the Society for Alternative to Animal Experiments. And also I am, uh, uh, I am after retirement, I am now the Research Coordinator at National College, the Trichirapalli. Well, I am uh, asked to be the moderator for the question and answer session or discussion uh, after the presentation by the two uh, experts. So uh, let me check if there are questions in the question box. Um, I think there are one or two like. Um, uh, Nageshwar has asked a question. Why do we need to do both the studies, the skin irritation and corrosion testing? Uh, anyone? I mean, I know the answer, but I would like either Dr. Pant or Dr. Pore to answer it. Why do we need to do both? Uh, studies that is irritation and corrosion. So, I should, I, I should respond? Or Dr. Pore, you will respond or I should respond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, you can answer, yeah. <laughs> so, basically, if you see that corrosion is a irre irreversible changes. So, that means a chemical one just cause a damage deep into the tissue in all three layers of the skin and irreversible changes so that is something different. While irritant is the reversible changes where the erythema, edema, and paraxia is there, which recover after a few hours of time. So that means the classification is required because that that irritant can be utilized up to a certain concentration if the beneficial effects are greater than the adverse effect. While corrosive materials are not advised to use in the public at all. That's why that both the tests are required to conduct separately. Uh, okay, Dr. Pant, uh, I think you, you, were, you have clarified the point. Um, well, um, uh, maybe I'll I'll bring up some questions to keep the discussion yes. up. Uh, like, for example, um, I mean, I mean, you have all the additional controls for the you 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 took corrosion as the example, and you, you brought in all kinds of kill control and life control. Uh, Kind of things should it be done for the uh, irritation test i mean uh, irritation test also the, these controls because there also we do only mttsa finally as i have said in the presentation that when we are doing investigative research in the investigative research our idea is to understand the mechanistic insights of a chemical how it is interacting with the biological system and how we can develop the antidotes and things like that. so there it is not required but when we are just saying any chemical is irritant or non-irritant for the regulatory point of view, then in that case, we have to take care of each and every aspect which can influence the ultimate outcome of the study significantly. Because if, as I have said, a compound which is a non-colorant, it is a simple white color item, but when we just mix it with a culture medium or in a aqueous solution, it gives a color. And that color is interacting with the tissue itself or with the MTT, it reduces MTT itself. So that means it will be a false positive if the effect is because of interaction of that chemical with the MTT, not because of the enzymatic activity. So we have to keep in consideration if sometime that color test item is making a coating on the tissue so that the enzymes are not properly acting on the MTT, and that interaction is not being done. So that means the pharmazone formation is affected. So that means the false negative result will be there. 
so keeping all these in mind we have to take care of while we are saying or we are classifying a compound as a irritant or non irritant for the regulatory purpose prior to put into the market because this is a pre licensing requisites because every year we are putting approximately 8000 to 9000 chemical in the kitty into the world so that means those chemicals prior to put into the market they are have they have to ascertain that they are safe for the consumption of human beings for that they have to keep for r and d for investigative research we can leave them because that that is not affecting so much of biological system as long as we are looking the mechanistic aspect both the controls all the controls are required for both irritation as well as for corrosion no 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 or not all that because in the initial no, because ultimately the mechanism is same uh, the mtt is same so wherever the compound is affecting or interfering with the mtt dye or the yeah. tissue so yes. controls are required yeah you have to put all controls yes sure uh maybe uh, i'll have one, one more question like um when who in india is making this rhe uh, do we do we have some <laughs> No. Are they saying human reconstructed human epidermis? Nobody. No. Nobody. In, in India, oh, officially that we have not disclosed, but in our our, our organization in IITR, we are making we are making the brain organoids also because in my laboratory we are making the different brain regions in form of organoids in form of spheroids. We have made the dopaminergic organoids, cholinergic organoids, and dopamine and benzodiazepine organoids. for the our r&d purpose in the same way we have a full fledged photobiology laboratory where we are just constructing this 3d model okay. for the human reconstruct that we are making but for this r&d purpose and okay. we are working on it and probably in very soon we will be in public domain for the regulatory purpose okay. also okay i'm not great. discussing that right now because that because of some technical reasons but we are very close to disclose it into the public domain and it should be accepted by the oecd again because yeah. yes it should be validated, validated perhaps it should be validated yeah. what is the so, what is the so it will be commercially available for all the stakeholders yes, yes. yeah great yeah. we have to understand first that what is the procedure to make a guideline or to accept great. by oecd first you have to have a strong hypothesis to work with then you have to generate the data and then intra laboratory validation inter laboratory validation Correct. then the blind review of the data by the many countries then just address the issues of them and then resubmit the data for the open review after open review it will be a draft guideline and then it will be approved as a guideline so that is a several ladders in between so you have to follow all them just to make it adoptable and approved guideline so we are very close to that very good thank you wish you all the best and um, i wish there is some a product comes up in india so that people will have easy access to the material yeah. otherwise it has come to abroad but countries and otherwise, otherwise there is one issue also because what the tissue we are getting from the outside that is that population is not mimicking with the indian population because our skin type is a different because our falling in the category 3 to 4 yeah. so that means again the melanin contents and the many of the factors which are not in accordance with the indian population so that means what the spf 50 70 80 120 whatever in the market that is not for the indian population so that we have to evaluate those compounds with our own skin for that's why we are trying to develop that is construct with the, our own indian skin and for our indian skin very good dr pant a uh, brilliant uh, approach and uh, i would like to just tell you that uh, in congratulating uh, iitr for bringing up this india made made in india rhg i mean there are also quite a few attempts made in other places recently we had a meeting in uh, jay research foundation and they are also almost ready with a product which they have made indigenously they have made and yeah. i wish more than one so that people have multiple choice of uh, sure. selecting the, the product i mean the material to be test, used for the test and that is brilliant the last question to both of you uh, uh dr pore was mentioning about the 
uh, the brace test which was invoked before uh, the 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 alternative or uh, in vitro test came up uh, I mean that the the can India banned the use of uh, DRACE test in the context of cosmetics, uh, if I remember yes. right. And yeah. um, is it applicable to pesticides also? Uh, no, it's still still it is still there, still in use. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's still in use for the for the for the no. pesticides. Yeah, yeah, yeah for pesticides. Okay, that's oh, it, that's it. That's it. That's it. For cosmetics, uh, all animal tests are banned for that matter. Not only this one, or except in vitro. Only in vitro test is allowed for cosmetics. Okay. No animal so, test. So, for Dr. Like Pan's point of view, you feel the, the, all these kinds of added controls are not ultimately resolving the issue. Finally, perhaps you may have to go back to animal testing. That was our I mean, conclusion. Yeah, yeah. The animal test would be only race test or any other test. So, Dr. Albasha, that uh, I just mentioned very well. That uh, in case of pesticide, that not only these tests, the eye irritation tests and corrosive eye corrosion test is still in practice in India for pesticide, for which we are fighting for long. That this test should not be there in the eye of rabbit because that chemical is already known that pH is 13, pH is 14, and pH is uh, say 4. Why you are putting that chemical to the eye of a chemical, but still it is working, uh, it is doing in India, and that's why in my first slide that I said. The animal testing is the last resort when our in vitro assays are inconclusive. As in my last two slides, that the data is very inconclusive. Even if we are observing under the microscope that everything is fine, and nothing is wrong, and even then the one reading is out of flyer, then in that case, in vivo tests with the minimum number of animals are required to be conducted. Uh, I understood it, Dr. Panth. My question was that, is it only dry test or some other in vivo test no. is there? No, for uh, skin irritation, only the dry test. Dress dress. Oh, that, 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 that resolves the issue. 404. Yeah. That is 404. 404, only 404. That is the modification of the dry test, original dry test. So there is no average for only intact skin is uh, allowed to apply. Yeah. So I think... Like here yeah. dr bush is just adding here like even if uh, you've seen the cibrc 2017 guidelines it does provide a lot of waiver opportunities on the basis of like yeah. you know physical properties technical feasibility like how dr pan said that if the ph is less than two more than 11 we know that it's going to be you know a corrosive so in that yeah. in that case the animal study would be waived so there are several opportunities to waive a particular endpoint especially skin and eye that have been like listed out in the guidance document so, yeah. so I think we have no more question to ask uh, to continue the discussion and we are also running short of time. I should now wrap up the whole uh, the, 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 the discussion now. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, the PETA India and the co-sponsors for, 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 for bringing up this wonderful program. Uh, thank uh, Dr. Ankita for uh, uh, the wonderful presentation, for presenting the speakers. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Um, Pore and uh, Dr. Panth for your very uh, exclusive performance, I mean, very brilliant performance. In, in uh, Dr. Pore made give the introduction, and then Dr. Panth got into the core of it, and he could uh, resolve many of the issues which many people must be must be imagining as to what would happen if these things are not done. So thank you, Dr. Pore, and thank you, Dr. Panth, for your uh, brilliant presentations. And uh, I thank all the uh, attendees. Uh, those who, who participated in this program. Uh, and I would like to now uh, uh, request the presenters, I mean the, the, the attendees, um, to write um, the webinar ends here and it will be there will be some pop-up uh, will appear to answer. There may be a few questions have come today. So the, the, the part attendees are requested to spare a few minutes and then answer the uh, questions that, 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 that appear in the pop-up. So with this uh, brief sum up, I would like to thank uh, all of you, uh, presenter, organizers, uh, speakers, participants, for the wonderful evening. I wish you all, all the best and a wonderful day to uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. And we call thank it a day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.